So today's poem is uh, slightly different. It's actually by uh, Plato, the famous Greek philosopher, a student of Socrates and then teacher of uh, Aristotle. Um, these poems are written, po well, it's kind of a poem, kind of not a poem. Uh, you know, it was written 2,000 plus years ago. <laughs> so, you know, what we consider poetry today is completely different from you know, what uh, ancient Greeks uh, called poetry. I'm not even sure if they had a word for poetry. Yeah, these are the four epigrams from Plato. When you count the stars, my love, I want to be the night sky, looking into you with all those eyes. Sailor, be well on the salt waves and on earth. Only from my stone and passing reed I lie here shipwrecked. Here, under a Botswain's stone, as there under a plowboy's, save for us, as everywhere, for everyone, is Haiti. I feel, when I kiss Agathon, how recklessly my soul leans forward at my lips, as if to step across. Stargate, inscription, propriety, and bound. And, uh, I'll just do a, a very small, uh, personal, personal take on these four uh, epigrams. Epigram, poem, uh, kind of like a proto-poem. The first one, yeah, it's, uh... Wow, that's quite beautiful. <laughs> it's, uh, flipping. Right? Yeah, you're kind of... Plato's flipping the perspective here. And we look up at the stars, and perhaps the stars are looking back at us, right? I want to be the night sky looking into you with all those eyes. <laughs> very, very romantic. And then uh, the second one. It's, uh, it reminds me of, uh, the Ozymandias poem we went through earlier, right, about the inscription, right, but nothing lies here. This is, uh, it's got a similar um, a vibe, right, it's about the passage of time and the uh, force of nature, right, nature carving, carving through all. The third one, It's, uh, yeah, propriety. Yeah. Well, well, it's, uh, talking about mortality, right? Hades, how we, uh, under a botswain, under a plowboy, same for everyone, same for everywhere, as same for us as everywhere for everyone. Uh, Hades is well, the underworld, or you know, the afterworld, and, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's talking about mortality, right, how we're all, how it's all the same for us, right, we're all mortal, we're all, uh, we're all gonna die, someday, sometime, somewhere, right, that is the same for all of us, and then Bound, another romantic poem, <laughs> my soul leans forward at my lips as if to step across. That's very, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty much, uh, it's right in the words. <laughs> I wonder if uh, Plato was quite romantic. Possibly. Of course, he talked about his uh, forms, right? From forms, uh, Plato's allegory of the cave, right, about how how our senses may deceive us, not just our senses, but our perceptions may deceive us, right? Or sorry, I guess I should flip that up there. Now how maybe we don't know what we actually know. Now, so usually with Plato, right, we have kind of like uh, an image of, or at least I have an image of um, 
a well-learned scholar, right? Socrates was like the wise man, right? The wise sage. Plato was like the educated, right? the uh, writer, the scholar. At least that's the image, but right from these poems, right, the epigrams, uh, we kind of get a different perspective on Plato, right? He might have been a, a lot more romantic <laughs> than we give him credit for. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, this is uh, interesting to see, like, another uh, another facet of Plato's life, right? What he thought, what he wrote. And I didn't know, uh, I didn't know Plato wrote uh, epigrams or poetry until, uh, until yesterday. <laughs> or no, until uh, a couple days ago. So it was a pretty surprising find. <laughs> <laughs>